Hi. Okay, everybody has been asking us what her symptoms were like leading up Hi. to her getting diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. So, I would say she had a lot of the normal symptoms no, that we didn't really no, see. I didn't know. She had no, this um, is yours. Mm -mm. frequent urination and the thirst, but we didn't really notice because we didn't know that that was a symptom because we didn't know anything about diabetes. Um, what did you notice that week? Uh, Wednesday, well, we took her to the hospital Friday, so yeah. I would say Wednesday evening after gymnastics, she walked out and I looked at her and I was like, man, she looks frail. Really, really skin and bones. Like, I was starting to notice her ribs. Yeah, like, she had lost weight quickly. she was kind of sluggish. She was very tired. So, she went to gymnastics on Wednesday. She performed great. She was doing her back handsprings, all the things. Um, Thursday morning, she was really tired, and I was like, I said, Mom, I don't feel good. I don't want to go to school, and she thought I was, like, trying to get out of school. Well, yes. I, oh, like, yeah. I think we're overdoing it with the gymnastics oh, yeah. two nights a week, because, oh, yeah, Sawyer, stop. Um, you know, the gymnastics Hi. two nights a week, we're getting home at 10 o'clock. We drove an hour and a half there and back each time. I was like, maybe we're getting home too late. Maybe we should take it back to one day a week. Um, and she's like, no, I'm fine. I'm going to go to school, but I'm just really tired. So the nurse called at like lunchtime that day and said that her throat hurt. Um, and I went and picked her up and she's like, my throat hurts. And I looked at her throat. It was red, um, had like some blisters in it. So I sent a picture to the pediatrician. Cool. Do I need to get her tested for strep? She's like, it sounds viral, but you know, let me know how she is tomorrow. It was no fever or anything like that. Um, you can talk in a minute. So then... The next morning is when she started vomiting, and she was very tired that night. She slept, like, most of the day, didn't have a great appetite. What? You can say it. Say it. I noticed something about Ray Ray, um, that she was a little pale. She was a little pale, and she had gotten, like, sunken in eyes the next morning. Like, her eyes were sunken in on Friday morning. So she threw up once and... Yeah. Kept sleeping. She would wake up, drink water, pee, go back to sleep. Drink water, pee, go back to sleep. And finally at like 1 o'clock the next day, I was like, something's not right. So, do you want to finish? But her best friend that does gymnastics with her had a viral thing with her throat swelling up as well. So, we kind of chalked it up to that. Um, and about 1 o'clock... Shannon looked at me and said, I think we need to go to the doctor. And I said, you're right, let's go. So, And I was kind of back and forth with her pediatrician that whole morning. Um, you know, she, we were back and forth on the phone. Does she have a fever? This and that. And all of a sudden, when I put her in the bath, that's when I really noticed. I could see her ribs and her spine. And I was like, Raylan, get on the scale. And I noticed she had lost eight pounds. So I text within, the doctor. Her doctor and I are pretty. Three, three or four days. Yeah, three her, days. yeah, it was very quick. Her doctor and I are pretty close. And I was like, she's lost like eight pounds. Um, so when I told her I was going to take her to the children's hospital across the bay where we live, it's like an hour and a half away. She was, she agreed. You need to go. To CHKD. We walked in. Um, oh, talk about I, how. Oh, talk I about cared. the weather that day. Oh gosh, it was nasty. Um, so the bridge was about we, to we close. Have to, we have to cross a bridge tunnel, and they get wind restrictions. It was like hurricane type and, weather, and they weren't going to let us cross. Um, luckily, I, I used to work there. I called the guys, and they're like, "You're good, just go." And uh, as soon as we got across, it was about 15, 20 minutes. They closed the bridge down. Um, we were coming through Norfolk. Everybody knows Norfolk. It's just a bowl. It catches all the water. It flooded roads. everywhere. So we hit two or three different uh, different um, routes to get to CHKD, and we were watching cars. I mean, they were riding through the water, and it was breaking on their windshield. I looked at her. I said, I've got one more route. Other than that, we're throwing on our shoulders, and we're going. Um, the last route, we made it. It was down Bramlin, so we made it to CHKD. Uh, well, no, probably eight, eight to ten different nurses and doctors that piled in immediately. Like I, I still had her in my hands, and the uh, there was a man doctor, and he said, "I'm pretty sure she's DKA." We didn't know and what I was that like, meant. Didn't know what it was, so I'm laying her down at this point, and I heard somebody say, "99% sure type one diabetic," and I was like, "What?" 
No way. So we laid her down, and uh, the doctor was like, you, you know, we need to talk. This, this isn't uncommon. Asked, asked what we had been seeing, and we told him. He said, I'm 99% I'm sure she's in DKA, which is diabetic, diabetic ketoacidosis, um, and she's a type 1 diabetic. And it just hit. It was like, oh, my God. And they were like, you know, she's so dehydrated, we can't get um, an IV in her arm. And I'm over here like, what? That, like, she's not dehydrated. She has been drinking a ton of water all day. And they were like, honey, that's what happens when they're diabetic. Yeah, and all they do is basically they're just drinking it and peeing it right out. Um, DKA, so they're going to ask, DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis, I work... It's basically when your body's not getting insulin that it needs and you have too much sugar and it's putting um, ketones into your bloodstream. And it's life-threatening. People do die of it if you yeah. hadn't gotten her there. And when we had just we were gotten lucky. off the bridge, we, we she was... We were a little was... over 600 on her blood sugar. Yeah. And they said, you know, that was, a lot that of times, was good. A lot of times it's 900 a thousand, to 1,000 or When more. people are dying there. She had started with this really labored breathing. Like, it, when we were, like, 10 minutes away from the hospital, it was like she couldn't breathe. And I'm like, what is going on? I mean, it never once registered through our head what it could have been. We just were not familiar with it. Yeah. Uh, my aunt on my dad's side is a type 1. She's been type 1 since she was 13 years old. And I'm assuming that's where it came from, obviously. You know, hereditary. But type uh, type 1 diabetes never crossed my mind. Um when we were on the way to the hospital, a lot worse things were going through my brain. So yeah. that being said, yeah, it was almost a relief it, that it was something right. that was going to be we were going to be able to live with, and right. she was going to be okay. Right, and she's, I mean, from day one, been amazing. Finally, did get one uh, IV going, and they needed two, but she was so dehydrated they couldn't get two, so they had to flush it out, and it was just a mess. So many nurses tried, and it wasn't their fault. It was just dehydration. Yeah. I mean, the, can't say enough about the, the staff at CHKD. I mean, they were truly, truly amazing with it. Um, they came in and struggled, or, um, taught us everything that we needed to know. For I mean, it was, it was on a weekend. We had to take class, a class yep. on different things. Three nights? Yeah, three we nights. We spent three nights, four days at CHKD. Um, and by the end of it, well, shoot, halfway through it, she was checking her own sugar. Um, Dexcom was more or less for, I, I would say, us and her because we were waking up every three hours and checking her blood sugar in the middle of the night. So nobody was sleeping. Her, we were afraid of her going low. Um, and she shares a room know. with Layson. Layson was waking up, you know. So we, we, we decided, and we talked to her about it, and we were like, look, you know, instead of us waking you up in the middle of the night, instead of us checking your sugar, pricking your finger 400 times a day, not really 400 times, but a lot, um, we can do this one big prick once every 10 days, summer. and um, we still struggle with it a little bit. You she like, only likes daddy, you like daddy to, do to do it, but she's done it on her own, and she likes to try to do it on her own every time. Okay. Good, we're killing it, right? Yeah. Crushing it. Yeah. Proud of so her. So we. Uh, Proud of brother and sister. It was a big lifestyle change for yeah. them as well. Every, everybody's been, been doing great. Yeah. What? Big sissy's a huge help. Running and getting her all of her Why stuff that she needs. So I'm little sissy. Sorry. <laughs> little sissy's a big help for big sissy. Running and getting her what she needs, and do you want to help us say bye? What? If you guys have any other questions, We'd be drop glad it below. To yeah, we're happy to help because everybody has helped us. We've had the community has been amazing, just you know, learning bye. from other people. So we would be happy to help. Thank you guys, and have bye. a good St. Patrick's Day. We bye. love you. Yeah.